So here is the review for the test. So number one, it says to solve the system of equations below by graphing and identify the solution. All right, so for our first one, number one, you'll notice that uh, y equals two x plus one is already solved for y. So we're gonna go ahead and do this in blue. We'll label our y-intercept and our slope. And our slope is a whole number, so we're gonna make it a fraction by putting it over one. So the two tells me to go up two, and the one tells me to go right one. All right, so we're gonna plot our y-intercept on one, and then up to right one. And to go backwards, we go down to left one. And then we connect our dots. There we go. And for the second one, we'll do this one in red. Again, this one's solved for y. So our y-intercept is seven. And our slope is just a negative sign, so that's gonna be negative one over one. And the negative one tells me to go down one and the positive one at the bottom tells me to go right one. So we'll plot our y-intercept at seven, we'll go down one, right one, and then right here at this point, you'll see they do intersect. I'm still following my slope just to make the line. And I'll connect my dots and we'll write the solution where they intersect. And they intersect at two comma five. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. <clears throat> okay, so for number two, we see we have to actually solve it first. So we'll take this first one, x minus y equals negative one. And we'll solve it for y, so let's go ahead and subtract the x. So negative y equals negative x minus one. Divide by negative one. y equals x plus one. Our y-intercept is one. Our slope is just a one, but to make it a fraction, we put it over one. All right, so now let's go ahead and graph this. So the y-intercept is at one. My slope tells me to go up one and then right one. And backwards, we go down one, left one. connect our dots there we go all right let's go ahead and do this next one so 3x plus y equals 9 let's go ahead and subtract the 3x and then we get y is equal to negative 3x plus 9 and that's already solved so my y-intercept here is 9 and my slope is negative three, so we're gonna put it over one to make a fraction. So we're gonna go down three, and then right one from when we plot that point at the y-intercept of nine. So down three, right one. And again, we see they intersect right there. Connect our dots. And we see they intersect at two comma three. Let's keep going. So numbers three and four says solve each system using the substitution method. Clearly identify the solution. <coughs> All right, so we'll notice here that y equals four x plus one is already solved. So we're gonna take this, that's our sub equation. We're gonna sub it in for y, because that's what y solved for. So three x plus two times four x plus one equals 13. So 3x, let's go ahead and distribute this 2. So 8x and 2 is equal to 13. 3x plus 8x is 11x, plus 2 is equal to 13. Subtract the 2. 11x equals 11, divide by 11. And we get our first value that x equals 1. So I'll circle that, come back to it in a sec. Now to get our second letter, we're gonna take x equals one, we're gonna plug it into one of the equations, and I'm gonna pick this one right here, because I already solved for y. So y equals four times x is one, plus one. 
So 4 times 1 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So then my ordered pair would be x comma y, 1 comma 5. All right, on to number four. Again, we're using substitution. <clears throat> um, the easiest one to solve for me is going to be uh, this equation right here. And the reason why is because x has a coefficient of one. So x plus four y is equal to 14. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract that four y. And I get x equals negative four y plus 14. I'm gonna cross this one out right here. And so my new equations are this one and this one. Okay, so here we see that x is solved for negative 4y plus 14. We're going to plug that in for this x right here. <clears throat> so we have 2 times negative 4y plus 14 minus y equals 1. Let's go ahead and distribute this 2 here. So negative 8y plus 28 minus y is equal to 1. We can combine the negative 8y and the negative y, which is negative 9y plus 28 is equal to 1. Well, that's a positive 1, sorry. And then now we're going to subtract the 28 over. So negative 9y is equal to negative 27. Divide by negative 9, and we get y is equal to 3. Now we're going to go ahead and substitute that in on the other one over here. So let's see. So x equals negative 4 times y is 3 plus 14. Type that in. Negative 12 plus 14 is 2. So my solution here is going to be x comma y so 2 comma 3 all right number five solve each system of, uh, using elimination again clearly identify your solution so here um, i'm looking for again a coefficient well i'm first looking to see if there's any that just well if i add them together they'll cancel out that doesn't happen so now i'm looking to see can I multiply one of the variables by a number so that I can cancel with the other variable, which doesn't happen here. So now uh, I'm gonna eliminate my x's. And the way I'm gonna do that, so this is five x on the top and two x on the bottom, so I'm gonna just bring the five to the bottom, multiply the whole bottom by five, and the top, multiply the whole thing by two. Now, one thing you'll notice is they're both positive, so one of them has to become negative. It, does not make a difference. I'm going to pick the top one. All right, so negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. Negative 2 times 3y is negative 6y. And all the way across, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Now I'm going to distribute the 5. So 10x, 5 times 4y is 20y. And 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. So now when I combine my like terms, you'll see the x's do cancel. Negative 6y plus 20y is 40y, 14y, sorry. And 2 minus 30 is negative 28, divide by 14. And y is equal to negative 2. All right, and that's now I'll take uh, negative 2 and we'll plug it into one of the equations. I'll pick the second equation just because the numbers are smaller. So 2x plus 4 times negative 2 equals negative 6. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. We're going to go ahead and add the 8 to the other side. So 2x equals 2. We're going to divide by 2. And x equals 1. So my solution, x comma y. So 1, negative 2. <laughs> All right, for the next one... Um, I noticed that for the y's, um, two can be multiplied by four to give me eight. And since one's positive, one's negative, they'll cancel out when I multiply by four. But I also know with the x's that if I multiply by three, it would be nine x. So if I multiply by negative three, they would become opposites as well. So I think I'll go with, um, I think I'll go with the, uh, the y's. So I'm going to multiply the top equation by 4. 
and this will give me 4 times 3x is 12x, 4 times 2y is 8y, and 4 times 48, uh, give me one second, let me see that. is 192. On the bottom, we're going to keep the 9x minus 8y equals negative 24. So 12x plus 9x is going to give me 21x. The y's do cancel. And 192 minus 24 is going to be 168. So to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 21. And 168 divided by 21 is going to give me 8. All right, now we're gonna take this eight, we'll plug it back into one of the equations. I'll stick with the three X plus two Y. So three X is eight, plus two Y is equal to 48. Three times eight is 24. Let's go ahead and subtract the 24. So two Y is equal to 24, divided by two, Y equals 12. So eight comma 12, is my solution. All right, number seven, define your variables and set up a system of equations. Do not solve. Okay, so admission to the gymnastics meet was $2.40 for an adult and $1.25 for students. If 540 tickets were sold for $934.90, how many of each kind? So right here, how many of each kind of ticket were sold? Okay, so for X, we'll talk about a adult ticket. So how many? So we're going to say number of adult tickets. Sold. And the other one is going to be number of student tickets sold. And our first one talks about the prices. So for an adult ticket, it's two dollars and forty cents. So two forty x plus a total a student ticket was a dollar twenty five y, and the total amount of money they made was nine hundred thirty four dollars and ninety cents. And then last, it says they sold five hundred forty tickets in total. So that means the number of adult tickets sold plus the number of student tickets sold is five hundred and forty. And from here, I'm done because I do not have to solve that. All right, for the next one, it says the booster club sells three types of tickets to the football game, general admission, student, and child. Mark bought nine general admission, two student, and three child tickets and paid $170. Danielle bought five general admissions, or admission, four student, and seven child tickets and paid $173. Mike bought four general admission, one student, and six child tickets and paid $116.50. Find the cost find the cost right there of each type of ticket. So we the tickets we have are the general. So we need to know the cost of a general admission ticket. The other one was a student ticket. So the cost of a student ticket. And then a child ticket. So the cost of a student child ticket. All right. So for the first one, Mark says he bought nine general admission plus two student plus three child tickets, and he paid one hundred and seventy dollars. Danielle bought. Five general admission, four student, and seven child tickets, and she paid $173. And then Mike bought four general admission, one student, and six child tickets, and he paid $116.50. All right. Solve each system equations, clearly identify your solution. All right, so here's where, let's see how this goes. So we're gonna call this first one equation one, equation two, and equation three. 
All right, so we are solving the system. Doesn't actually give me a method. So I'll do this one using, let's go and just try, because one has to be substitution, one should be elimination. Let's just do substitution here, okay? So I'm gonna solve this. Let's see which equation I'm gonna solve. Um, all right, I'll take this first one and solve for z. So 2x minus y plus z equals to 1. I would subtract the 2x, add the y. Then that gives me z equals negative 2x. Let's go back there. Let's start with the 1. 1 minus 2x plus y. All right. Okay, so now we have this equation is gone, and this is my new one right here. Okay, all right, so I'm going to substitute that into equation two and then into equation three. So let's see if we can do this here real quick. Okay, um, so for the first one, we start with 3x minus 3y plus 4 times 1 minus 2x plus y equals 5. So we have 3x minus 3y plus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8x. And 4 times y is 4y. And then we have 3x minus 8x, which is negative 5x negative 3y plus 4y, which is positive y. I'm going to go ahead and subtract this 4 to the other side. And 5 minus 4 is 1. So this is equation 4. And now let's go ahead and do the next one. So we have equation 3, 4x minus 2y plus 3z. And again, we know that z is right here, 1 minus 2x plus y. And that equals 4. Okay. So 4x minus 2y plus 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6x. 3 times y is 3y. That equals to 4. 4x minus 6x is negative 2x. Negative 2y plus 3y is y. We're going to go ahead and subtract that 3 over. And 4 minus 3 is 1. And we'll call this equation 5. All right, now at this point here, um, I can use substitution or elimination. So I'm going to go ahead and stack them on top of each other just so I can see what I'm working with here. So I have negative 5x plus y is equal to 1 and negative 2x plus y is equal to 1. So I think the easiest thing over here is just to multiply one of these by negative 1. So we get, on the top, we're going to stay the same, negative 5x plus y is equal to 1. On the bottom, we multiply by negative 1. So we get 2x, negative y, and negative 1. So negative 5x plus 2x is negative 3x. My y is re reduced down to 0, and 1 minus 1 is also 0. So when we divide by negative 3, we get x is equal to 0. There's our first part of the answer. Now we're going to take this and plug it back into one of the originals. So I'll go with this, or one of the 2 by 2, sorry. I'm going to go with equation 5. So negative 2 times x is 0 plus y is equal to 1. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, so we get left with y equals 1. Now we take 0 and 1 and plug it back into one of the originals. And I'm actually going to plug it into the one I solved. So we'll do this one right here. So z equals 1 minus 2 times x is 0 plus y, which is 1. So z equals 1 plus 1, which is 2. So my solution is x comma y comma z. All right, and there is the substitution one. Uh, for the next one, I am going to do elimination. And again, so let's label these equation 1, 2, and 3. 
Okay. Now, the first thing I notice is if you look at the third equation, it's missing an x. So if I use equation 1 and equation 2, my goal would be to get rid of the x. So um, if I took equation 2 and I subtracted 2 times equation 1, that would allow me to remove my x's. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing here by negative 2. So negative 2 times, oh, actually let me rewrite equation 2 first. So 2x minus y plus 3z equals to 0. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y. Negative 2 times negative z is 3z. And negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. So when we combine here, we see our x's cancel. Negative y minus 4y is negative 5y. 3z plus 3z is 6z. And 0 minus 10 is negative 10. And we'll call this equation 4. Now from here, you'll notice that equations 3 and 4 both are two variable systems, and they both have y and z. So uh, looking at equation 3 and 4, um, I think the easy thing for me to do is we take equation 4 and subtract 6 times equation 3. That way so I can remove my z's. So for equation 4, it's negative 5y plus 6z equals negative 10. So for this one, I would multiply this by negative 6. So negative 6 times 2y is negative 12y. Negative 6 times z is negative 6z. And negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. So negative 5y minus 12y is negative 17y. My z's do reduce to 0. And negative 10 minus 6 is negative 16. All right, so now let's just go back and verify that I not make an error. So 2x minus y plus 3z equals 0. Negative 2x, negative 4y, and there is my mistake. So always go back and check it. Um, so right here, when I did negative 2 times negative z, I put a 3z when that should have been a 2z. So let's just fix that real quick. So 3z, that should be a 5z. All right. So then that would have been... So now that changes everything. Um, I should be multiplying by negative 5 now. All right. So let's see if this works here. Okay, so let me erase both of these and just, okay, so let's start here. Equation four is negative five y plus five z equals negative 10. Negative five times two y is negative 10 y. Negative five times z is negative five z. And negative five times one is negative five. So the y's become negative 15y, the z's do cancel, and negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15. Divide by negative 15, and y is equal to 1. All right, now we're going to go back to one of our two variable systems, and I'll take equation, I'll take equation 3. So for equation 3, we have 2y, and let's go back, that y is actually 1. So 2y, so 2 times 1, plus z equals to 1. 2 plus z equals 1. To undo that 2, we're going to subtract it to both sides, and z equals negative 1. And last, <coughs> we're going to figure out our x values. So I'll go with that first equation. x plus 2y, which is 1, minus z, which is negative 1, equals to 5. 2 times 1 is 2, negative and a negative becomes positive 1, which equals 5. So x plus 3 equals to 5, subtract the 3 from both sides, and x equals to 2. So my order triple is 2, comma, 1, comma, negative 1. There we go. Alright, next one. 
<coughs> Excuse me. It says solve each nonlinear system by substitution and elimination. Clearly identify the solution. All right, so for this first one here, um, one of them's already solved for y or x, so we're gonna take the second equation and we're gonna substitute it in for y in the first equation. So we have x plus, and since there's nothing being multiplied, there's no negative sign, um, you can draw the parentheses, but it's not necessary for this one. So again, it's not necessary, so I'm just dropping them. So let's rearrange this in a standard form. So x squared would come first, x would come second, minus four is equal to two. Since this is a quadratic function, to solve it, we have to set it equal to zero. So I'm subtracting the two. I'm gonna factor this, x plus three, x minus two. And then I get x equals negative three and x equals positive two. From here, we're gonna take this and we're going to plug them into our equations because when we're working with systems, our solution is an ordered pair, not just x or y. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it into this one because this one's already solved. So y equals negative three in parentheses squared minus four. So y equals five. So negative three comma five is my first solution. And for the second one, y equals two squared minus four. So y equals zero. So two comma zero is my second solution. All right, on to the next one. Again, this one is going to be a substitution because we can see that the second equation is solved for y. So we're gonna plug that in for y. So let's start with, let's see, let me change this color. There we go. So x plus, and then we have this whole thing here, this trinomial equals two. Again, that's the parentheses are not necessary. All right, so let's put it in standard form. So x squared, x minus four x is negative three x. Then we have a plus four equals to two. Let's go ahead and set this equal to zero since it's a quadratic function. And then we're gonna factor this. And then my two solutions would be x equals to two and x equals to one. All right, let's go ahead and plug these in. All right, uh, I'm gonna pick, oh, this one's, <laughs> I'm gonna pick this linear one because that just seems easier. Um, so x, so x is two plus y is equal to two. Subtract this two, y equals zero. So x comma y, there's my first solution. For my second one, x is one plus y is equal to two, subtract our one, y equals to one, so we have one comma one. All right, number 13. Um, again, this one is another one where you have to solve it first. So I'm just gonna subtract this x over. So I would come up with y equals one minus x, or you can write um, negative x plus one, it's up to you, okay? Now, since this is solved for y, we're gonna plug this in right there, okay? So let's see how this one looks. Okay, so we start with x minus one squared plus y changes to one minus x plus two squared equals to 10. x minus one squared plus negative x, one plus two is three, squared equals to 10. We're gonna write x minus one twice, because it's squared, and we're gonna write negative x plus three twice also, because it's squared. So x squared, negative x, negative x, positive one. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Negative x times three is negative three x. Three times negative x is negative three x. Three times three is nine, and that still equals to 10. And here, um, I'm gonna com combine all my like terms right now. So x squared plus x squared is two x squared. Negative x, negative x, 
negative 3x, negative 3x. So that's going to be negative 8x. And then 1 plus 9 is 10 equals to 10. Since we have a quadratic function, we want it to equal 0. So we're going to subtract 10 to the other side. So we get 2x squared minus 8x is equal to 0. From here, we can factor out the GCF of uh, 2x. And that would leave me with, so I divide this by 2x, that would be x. Divide this by 2x, that would be negative 4. So set one, each, each one of these equal to 0, so we can see it. Divide by 2, x equals 0. Add the 4, x equals 4. All right, and now we have to plug in to get our y values. So I'm going to pick this one that I solved, y equals 1 minus x. So y equals 1 minus 0, so y equals 1. So x, this is x is 0, comma 1 for my first solution. y equals 1 minus 4, so y equals negative 3, so 4, comma, negative 3. All right, let's keep going here. Um, for this one here, again, um, they, none of them really lend themselves to elimination. So I'm going to go ahead and for this one, I'm going to solve for x. I'm going to add this y to the other side. So that's going to give me x equals 1 plus y or y plus 1. So let's get rid of that. So now I'm using these two equations here. Okay, so let's go ahead and substitute in. So we have, <clears throat> so x is 1 plus y, that's going to substitute in here. So parentheses, 1 plus y, close parentheses squared, plus y squared equals to 25. So we're going to write this twice. And let's see what we get here. So this one I'm going to FOIL out. 1 plus 2y plus y squared plus y squared equals 25. Now I'm going to rewrite this in standard form. So y squared plus y squared is 2y squared plus the 2y plus 1 equals to 25. You know, because it's quadratic, we have to set it equal to 0. So we're subtracting that 25 over. So 2y squared plus 2y minus 24 is equal to 0. I'm going to factor out a 2 here. So y squared plus y minus 10 is equal to 0. <clears throat> All right, now from here, I do have to verify, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So let me give me one sec here. So I added the y, 1 plus y, that's fine. All right, I plugged in for x. So 1, 2y, y squared. That was a y squared equals 25. y squared plus y squared is 2y squared plus 2y plus 1 equals 25. Subtracted, we get negative 24. Um, they're all divisible by 2. <clears throat> so we get y squared. Ah, there's my mistake. <laughs> negative 24 divided by 2 is negative 12. Okay. Now I'm going to factor this. So we get y plus 4 y minus 3. All right, we're going to solve each one. So y equals to negative 4 and y equals to positive 3. Now, if you're curious about this 2 right here, it doesn't have a solution because it does not have a variable. At last, we're going to go ahead and solve this here. So let's plug it in. Let's plug it into the one we solved. So x equals 1 plus negative 4. So that's really 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So my x, negative 3, comma, y, negative 4. So be, do be careful that you're putting them correctly. And then for the next one, x equals 1 plus y is 3, which gives us 4. So we get 4, comma, 3. All right, for the next one, <coughs> the next two, it says to graph each linear inequality, clearly indicate, clearly indicate the solution region. Okay, so for the first one, 2x minus y is less than or equal to 4. So we're going to subtract 2x to solve for y. So negative y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 4. 
Now, when I divide by this negative one right here, remember if you multiply or divide by negative, you have to flip the inequality sign. And now we're gonna identify, so we know that b is equal to negative four, and m is equal to two over one, so that's up two and right one. So let's see, so negative four, one, two, three, four, and then up to right one. And backwards down to left one. All right, now we're gonna look at our inequality sign. So we'll see this inequality sign, it is solid because it is an equal bar. And that is read as greater than, so we shade above. All right, let's go ahead and get the next one here. So 3x plus 2y is greater than negative 6. So to solve for y, we're going to first move the 3x to the other side by subtraction. And to isolate the y, we divide both sides by 2. So y is greater than negative 3 halves x minus 3. So my y-intercept is negative three. My slope is negative three over two. So that tells me to go down three and right two from that y-intercept of negative three. All right, so let's see if we can get this graph here. So we get one, two, three. We go down three, one, two, three, and right two. Let's hold the graph a little bit, that's fine. So one, two, three, left two. our graph. This one is going to be dashed because there's no equal bar. This one says uh, greater than, so we shade above. So our double shaded region is going to be right here in this dark shaded region I'm doing. And that should be the solution set. <coughs> okay. So let's go ahead to the last problem here. So here we have three of them. Um, Let's go ahead and do this first one here in blue. So we have 2x plus 3y is less than 6. So we're going to isolate the y by first subtracting the 2x. So 3y is less than negative 2x plus 6. Divide everything by 3. y is less than negative 2 thirds x plus 2. All right. So my y-intercept is at positive two, my slope is negative two-thirds, so down two and right three. So we're gonna go to y is equal to two. Then our slope tells us to go down two, right three. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so down two, right three. Backwards will be up two, left three. All right, now, the inequality sign says less than, so there's no equal bar, so it's dashed. And it's less than, so it's shaded below. So dash, and we shade below. So let's see if we can do this here. So dashed. And we shade below. So I'm just drawing it like that, so we know it's there. All right, now we're gonna go to our next line. Uh, nice thing about our next line is it is already uh, solved for us. So my y-intercept is four. My slope is, see how it says negative two thirds. We're gonna put that negative two at the top and the bottom stays positive. So again, this tells me down two, right three. So we start at four on the y-axis. And then we go down two, right three. Um, Let's go look at the inequality sign. It is equal to, so that's a solid line, and greater than shades above. All right. At this point here, I can already tell the answer is gonna be a no solution. And the only reason I can see that is because the third line, no matter where I graph it, it may intersect both of them, but not all three will intersect at the same time. But we're still gonna complete this one to make sure it is good. So let's go and change this to purple. All right, so negative two X plus Y 
is less than negative two. So to solve for y here, we're gonna add the two x over. So y is less than two x minus two. Y intercept is negative two. Slope is two, make a fraction put over one. So the positive two tells me to go up two, the positive one tells me to go right one. So let's go ahead and graph negative two. And we're gonna go up two, right one. Uh, it is less than, so it's a dashed line because there's no equal bar. And less than shades below. So when I shade it below, again, you'll see that, yeah, none of them intersect at all, at all three spots, so that's a no solution. All right, and that is going to complete the review.